everyone, it's Lean from ColoradoLean.com. Welcome back to Craft Room. Today we're going to sublimate a 22 ounce Make Market water bottle with my brand new Viver Tumbler Press. So let me talk about some of the things we're going to need. Of course we're going to need our sublimation ready tumbler. I found this beautiful butterfly image on Creative Fabrica. It is printed on a sub sublimation paper with my Epson F170 sublimation printer. I have a piece of parchment paper cut up, ready to go. To clean our tumbler before we press it, we need isopropyl alcohol and a lint-free cloth. I'm using a coffee filter. And for added cleanliness, I'm also going to use a lint roller. Of course, because we're working with extremely hot things, we're going to need some heat resistant gloves. I have my easy press mat ready to go. And of course, I have my Amazon heat resistant tape on this amazing tape dispenser. And of course, we're also going to need a tape measure. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? So as I mentioned, I'm going to be sublimating a 22 ounce Make Market water bottle from Michaels. Um, I have made a couple of these in the past and I will show them to you at the end. So we want to get rid of the top of it and we're going to go ahead and measure this. Now I've already measured it and I have my image ready to go. The area for this particular water bottle is approximately eight inches tall. And then to find out how wide we need to cut our image, we just take our tape measure, wrap it around, do it the right way so we can see it. wrap it around and then pull it really tight and as you can possibly see I have about nine and a quarter inches. So I already have my design cut to approximately eight inches tall by nine and a quarter inches wide. Uh, because this is only going to be in the center of my water bottle. It doesn't need to be particularly precise. Um, if you have a full wrap image, then it needs to be exactly spot on the right size. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean our water bottle. And I have my isopropyl alcohol and my lint free cloth. And then we're just going to clean this really well. And then we're going to do our best not to touch the outside of the water bottle. But in case I do, I am going to wipe my fingers down a little bit. And as a little action extra cleanliness, I will use a lint roller because as I mentioned in sublimating uh, mugs and mouse pads, if there is any lint or dirt on the item, when it's heated, it will not come off. You're just, you're stuck with what you have. So let's go ahead and get this wrapped up. Now with all sublimation items, you need to have a 
super tight fit of your paper. There are many different ways to wrap. This works for me, although I'll be honest, I haven't sublimated a tumbler or a water bottle in a long time. So I am holding this extremely tight and I am wrapping it around. Oh, I didn't want that down as tightly as I can. It's just overlapping a little bit. And like I said before, because I'm not doing a full wrap image, it doesn't matter all that much. Okay, so now I will take a nice long piece of tape. And I will go down the full seam. And it'll probably take two pieces. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to run my finger down this tape and it might be a little difficult to see on camera but I can see already that my image comes down to here and the top of the image is up to here if it went any higher or any lower then I would definitely tape the bottom and the top of my design but I don't think that's going to be an, an issue right now. But I guess we'll find out together, won't we? <laughs> okay, so I have that on there. And now I will take my butcher paper, not parchment. And this is mostly to protect the tumbler press. Um, in case there is any blowout, grab a pair of scissors. I did cut this rather large. So I'm just going to line that up. We'll put a little piece of tape there, wrap it around and then secure it with some more tape. Now again, if I had a full image that was going top to bottom, I would definitely tape this more, but I think, I hope this is gonna be all right. Now I have seen other sublimation artists on YouTube mark their tumblers so they know where the top is. So I will go ahead and just write top on there because I will have to rotate my tumbler through the process. So I think this is ready to go. Let me rearrange the craft room a little bit and get my tumbler press set up and I'll be right back with you. All right, I have my craft room rearranged a little bit. Here is my Vivor tumbler press. I love this pretty pink. Uh, what came in the box, of course the press, I got a power cord, I have my user manual. Uh, they sent me a roll of thin heat resistant tape a pair of heat resistant gloves and they also sent along uh, some sublimation paper that I'm going to try one of these days. So we'll go ahead and get these out of the way. And the first thing we need to do is we need to plug in the heating element and it's just a 
just a little cord here. See if we can't get that lined up. Get that plugged in. And then we will screw that in nice and tight. And then we just need to get our cord plugged in. All right, I have the Viva Tumbler Press plugged in. Um, I do not have it turned on yet. We need to adjust the pressure. So I will go ahead and put my tumbler into the cold press and close it. And then we'll just turn these knobs and get it to what I'm assuming would be a medium pressure. Um, I really have no idea since I've never used a tumbler press before. That feels about right, I guess. Um, I can't move the tumbler, so I guess. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and take the tumbler out. Set that aside for a moment. Um, to turn our press on, we just push the button. To set our temperature, and according to the Make Market website, we need to have it at 360 degrees. Let's see. Okay, well, that's the time. Okay, there we go. There is the temperature. So we'll set it for 360 degrees. Push the button. And the time needs to be 60 seconds. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, this is confusing, but all new items are. So we'll just turn the knob to 60 seconds. Press it to confirm. Nope, I think that started the timer. Okay, now we wait. <laughs> um, it is definitely warming up. I can... I can feel the heat coming off of that. It looks like it's already at 218 degrees, so that is going really fast. So, like I said, according to the Make Market heating guide for their sublimation surfaces, uh, stainless steel drinkware, which is what the water bottle is, uh, needs to be, the temperature needs to be between 356 and 360 degrees for 60 seconds. So we'll give that a try. And oh wow, we're already up to 278 degrees. That is heating up nice and fast. So we'll just let it go the rest of the way. And there we go, 360 degrees. So I'll go ahead and put my tumbler in and where I have written top, I will put that to the top. We'll slide that in the center, close it down and push the button for 60 seconds. Now, while that is going, let me just tell you a little bit about this. Um, it has a 620 watt heating element. The temperature range is from 104 degrees to 410 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and that's 40 degrees to 205 degrees Celsius. Uh, the maximum time is 999 seconds, which is a little over 16 minutes. It will work with 12 to 30 ounce straight-sided tumblers. 
11 to 16 ounce can coolers, 12 to 30 ounce glasses, 12 ounce kids sippy cups, and 11 to 16 ounce coffee mugs. Now, if your coffee mugs are 11 to 15 ounces, you can put two of them in at the same time. And there we go. So we'll pop this open and I will turn it approximately 180 degrees and then close it again and run it for another 60 seconds. Now I should have put that a little closer to the center. Um, I can turn that so you can see it's just right there. That's not going to be a, an issue for this particular tumbler because it's not a full wrap. Um, if the image came up all the way to the top, I would be concerned. Um, I would stop it, move it to the center. But I'm confident this is going to be fine. And now we're done. So I'm just going to bring in my mat. Pop that open. Take my tumbler out and set it down because it is very hot. And then see if I can figure out how to turn this off. Yeah, you just hold it, hold the button in and it turns itself off and I'm going to rearrange the craft room again and we'll be back when the tumbler is cool. All right, we've got the craft room reset again and the tumbler has cooled. So let's take a look. First, I want to show you, and I've mentioned this before, how when you do a sublimation image that you can see it come through on the paper on the back of it, that's typically a good sign. So let's go ahead and get this open. If it does take too long, I will go ahead and speed through this process. Oh, okay. Well, that was just the butcher paper. So yes, this right here is why you need butcher paper. You can see that image almost perfectly. If I didn't have that on there, then that ink could potentially be on my heat element and that would be bad. So now you can really see this butterfly. That is, oh, this is going to be so, I know it's going to be pretty. So let's go ahead and get our tape off. Came off really nice. And oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Check that out. Holy cow. Holy cow. And I am actually making this for my sister. So there is her name, Miss Betty. Oh, that turned out so nice. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Absolutely love it. So like I mentioned before, I have sublimated these tumbler or these water bottles before. Um, I used my Viver mug press. Uh, so it's just, it's not quite the same. Um, this was the first one I did. It was a full wrap, but as you can see, it had a definite line down the center where it did not get enough heat. Uh, part of that was my fault. Uh, because of the way I had it, um, here is the one that actually worked. So you can use the Viver mug press. The images come out beautifully when you figure out the proper way to do it. In order to do that, though, you have to have silicone wraps. So I did buy these. Um, they are from PYD Life. They come in three different widths, depending on how much 
space you need to take up in your mug press. Um, I'm glad I have those. However, I'm tickled pink that I don't need them to do tumblers anymore. It, oh, this just turned out so beautiful. I know it's hard to get a good image because of the glare from the lights. Um, I will do my best to take some really nice still shots uh, to put up on the blog, the corresponding blog post. Um, but yeah, holy cow. I am so happy that I bought that Tumblr, Tumblr press. Well, I'm speechless. <laughs> so I was all ready to come on and talk about, you know, okay, well, if it didn't work, you know, maybe I can up the time, maybe I can up the temperature, maybe I can rotate it again. That still may be an issue depending on the, f if it's a full wrap image. Um, like I said, when I rotated my tumbler, I didn't have it centered in the tumbler press. So that may have affected an image up here. Um, but yeah, so this is great. The next tumbler I do in the tumbler press, I'll bring you back along for the ride. Um, until then, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when I put up the next video. Until then, have a great day, you guys. I'll see you again soon. Bye.